How did you spend your life? How did you spend your life? Some of you might have been given 80 years, some 90 years, some 65 years. How did you spend when you had the experiences of your life and you gained the knowledge? How did you spend the rest of your life? And then the third question, how did you earn? Your earnings, were they lawful? Were they halal? Were they permissible? Did you refrain from the unlawful earnings? And then the fourth question, how did you spend your earnings? And last but not the least, the knowledge you were blessed with, how much did you act upon it? Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian, rizqan tuayyiban, wa amalam mutakabbala. Now words, Number five, Iya kana wudu wa iya kana sta'in. It is you. You means what? Allah. It is you we worship and you we ask for help. In the literal word to word translation, this is basically, it means what the translation is that only you we will worship or obey and only you we will seek help from. This verse of Surah Fatiha is actually a promise. It is a pact. It is a covenant of the reciter with Rabbul Alameen, with the Rahman, with the Rahim, and the glorified Allah. Now, when, where, how do we make this promise and covenant with Allah? Whenever, wherever we recite Surah Fatiha, we are making this promise with Allah. Like just realize when we are in our Salah, facing Qibla, all purified, standing in Qiyam, our hands tied up like obedient servants, our eyes, our heads going down before our magnificent Lord, in a state of total submission and humbleness, do we all make this promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the start of every rakat of our salah, so many times a day. So, first of all, we need to understand. And secondly, we need to fulfill this promise with our Lord. So, it has two forms of promises we are making with Allah. <coughs> the first is Iya ka na'udu. Iya means only. And ka is the word for a masculine. And here it signifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that you Allah we will only do what? Na'udu. Now the root word of na'udu is ayn ba'dal. And Arbd has two literal meanings. Number one means worship, and the second means to obey. So the first meaning is only you shall we worship. Only you shall we worship. Worships are basically physical, like uh, salah or offering the prayer, fasting, remembrance of Allah or zikr, recitation of Quran, jihad, fighting the path of Allah then um, hijrat or doing immigration, performing hajj, and hajj has both physical and monetary components of worship. And then the worships are monetary, for example, paying zakat, or then super erogatory charity beyond zakat in the path of Allah, and then hajj has a monetary component also, and then spending in the path of Allah for jihad, for fighting, and for the preaching of Islam and Quran and teaching, spreading the teachings of Quran. And then there are the spiritual worships like remembrance of Allah, sabr, shukr, rely, reliance and tawakkul and piety, taqwa, fear of Allah, contentment. So we are promising that we will only worship Allah implies that all forms of worships will be only of Allah and for Allah. Of Allah means what? That there will be no other partners with Allah. This that there will be worships only of Allah, this negates and puts 
to an end all forms of polytheism. And uh, as we say in Surah Khlas, or as we say, we have been taught in Quran to say, So this is basically that all worships will be of Allah. And the second thing is all forms of physical, monetary, spiritual worships will be for Allah. They will have no intention to acquire any worldly gain or any worldly advantages. The purpose of the worship will not be to impress people or to gain good popularity or good reputation or for getting any business or political gains or exhibition or show off for worldly purposes. So this is the first meaning of Iya Kanabudu, that all the worships will be of Allah and for Allah. Now, the second meaning, because Ayn Ba Dal means what? The slave. Abd is the slave. Now, what does the slave do? The slave with a master obeys his master and obeys his master alone and obeys his master completely, totally, in a state of total obedience and surrendering. So now when we say the second promise which we are actually main, making is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are your slaves and you are our master and our Lord. And we will be just obedient to you only. This is the same as we say la ilaha illallah, that there will be no ilah for us other than Allah. So these two, Iya Kanabudu and La ilaha illallah, are what? They are both. This is a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it implies and it announces that we shall not obey any anybody other than Allah, any power other than Allah. It is a clear-cut declaration and announcement by the person. Me, you, whoever we say, we make we make a clear declaration that Allah. If the desires of our soul, the likes, the wishes of our spouse and family, the customs of my family or my clan, the norms of my society, the rules and regulations of or laws of my country, all these orders, rules, regulations, norms, customs, they are according to, or they abide with your orders and your rules and your laws and limits, then I shall accept them. But if any of these, any of these, they clash or they are contradictory to your rules, your laws, your commandments, then for me, obedience is just for you. I shall say no to my family, my clan, my society, and I shall be obedient to you only. I shall surrender to you only. This is a pledge of obedience. This is a promise of total worship. This is a pact to surrender. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remember and fulfill our promises with Allah, which we regularly make at the start of every rakat of salah, so many times in the day, and in a state of total submission and obedience. And the second promise is, Iya qanastari. From you only, from you only Allah, we will ask for help. We will ask for guidance, protection, sustenance, healing and cure. We will ask for our desires, our needs, our requirements. So this indirectly also puts to end to all forms of polytheism like calling and asking from prophets and saints and shaheeds or people of the graves and so on.